When you look at photos taken from spaceships or the International Space Station that shows sunlit objects like Earth or the moon something seems wrong space looks too empty no magical scenery of a nighttime sky full of stars it would be incredibly boring to go stargazing in space since the sky is always dark during the daytime the sky on our home planet is blue because of the diffusion of light it happens when sunlight goes through the atmosphere but if you were on the moon or somewhere else in space there would be no atmosphere to spread this light around that's why the sky there would always appear black but it doesn't mean less bright out there if you were looking out the window of the space station you'd see just as much direct sunlight as you would gazing out of your apartment window during a cloudless day maybe even more when taking a picture on a sunny day you'll probably use a short exposure together with the narrow aperture setting on your camera this way just a short Burst of light will get in that's similar to how our pupils contract in sunlight, so that they don't have to deal with too much light, and, since it's just as bright up there in space the process, is the same when you take pictures of sunlit objects they're using short exposure, you can get good bright pictures of Earth, or the surface of the moon, but, it also means there will be no stars in the picture, even up there stars are relatively dim they don't emit. Enough light to show up in photos taken with. Such settings our home planet has a blue sky that slowly transforms into a beautiful orange-red palette at dusk and dawn, but if you ever get a chance to watch a sunset on Mars, you should expect the opposite an orange-brown daytime sky that gets a bluish tint at sunset first of all Mars is farther away from the sun than our planet, so when you're looking at the sun from the Martian surface of course it looks fainter and smaller, and not just that. The sun observed from Mars is just a bluish white. Dot surrounded by a blue halo, the thin atmosphere of the red planet contains large dust particles, they create an effect called my scattering it occurs, when the diameter of particles in the atmosphere is almost the same as the wavelength of the scattered light, this effect filters out the red light from the sun's rays, so only the blue light would reach your eyes on Mars, how come Earth doesn't have rings all gas giants in our solar system Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune have such rings whereas the rocky planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, don't there are two theories about how rings can appear around a planet, they might be just some material left from the times when the planet was forming, or they may be the remains of a moon that got destroyed by a collision with some space body or torn apart by the strong gravitational pull of its parent planet, the gas giants formed in the outer regions of our solar system while all the rocky planets are in the inner part, so maybe the inner planets were more protected from potential collisions that could have formed their rings there are also more moons in the outer regions of our solar system which could be another reason why the planets there have rings also bigger planets have stronger gravity it means that they can keep their rings stable after they form some experts believe earth used to have a ring system a long time ago a mars-sized object might have collided with our home planet which probably created a dense ring of Debris around it, some scientists think that this debris formed not a ring but what we know today as the moon there's probably a giant planet lurking at the edge of the solar system far beyond Neptune scientists call this mysterious hypothetical world planet 9, if it does exist it's probably similar to Uranus or Neptune and 10 times more massive than our home planet, it's likely to circle around the sun but in the outer reaches of the solar system about 20 times farther than Neptune another. Interesting theory says that Planet 9 could actually be a black hole the size of a grapefruit that warps space in a similar way a large planet would even though he once thought it was a rare substance in space water exists all over our solar system for example, you can often find it in asteroids and comets, it's also in craters on the moon and Mercury, we still don't know if there's enough water to support potential human colonies if we decide to move there, but some amount of water is. Definitely present there Mars has water at its poles too, it's mostly hidden in the layers of ice, and probably under the planet's dusty surface Europa Jupiter's moon, has some water too, this is the most likely candidate we know about to host life outside Earth, there's probably a whole ocean of liquid water under its frozen surface, it might actually contain twice as much water as all of Earth's oceans combined Neptune is unexpectedly warm even though it's 30 times as far from the sun as our planet, and receives less sunlight and heat, but it still radiates way more heat 
than it gets it also has way more activity in its atmosphere than you'd suspect especially if you compare it to its neighbor Uranus both of these planets emit the same amount of heat even though Uranus is much closer to the sun no one knows why Neptune has extremely strong winds that can reach a speed of up to 1 500 miles per hour can they produce this heat or maybe it's because of the planet's core or its gravitational Force there's a monster black hole hurtling through space at a speed of 5 million miles per hour scientists located it with the Hubble Space Telescope, they believe it weighs as much as a billion suns, it was supposed to stay put in the center of its home galaxy, but some gravitational forces are pushing it around at one point this black hole is going to break free from its galaxy and continue roaming the universe luckily it's still 8 billion years away from us solar storms are so powerful that they could leave us in complete darkness back in July 2012 the strongest solar storm in over 150 years narrowly missed Earth foreign coronal mass ejections, or CMEs, are large bubbles of ionized gas, they tore through our orbit back then, if they had caught our planet in the crosshairs we would have literally been in the firing line we'd have faced solar matter, hurtling towards Earth damaging computers and causing power outages that would have lasted for months a surprise solar storm hit us on june 25 2022 one photographer even managed to capture stunning bright auroras that flashed across the dawn sky in calgary canada and lasted for five minutes they were caused by the storm vampire stars are a real thing they're part of a binary star and they can literally drain the life out of the other star in the system they do it to keep burning for a longer time it works like this a smaller star with a lower mass steals its siblings hydrogen fuel to increase its own mass this vampire star then becomes hotter plus its color changes to striking blue this way it looks much younger how sneaky the color of the universe is dubbed cosmic latte the light coming from our galaxies and stars within them as well as clouds of gas and dust in the observable universe have a specific color it's an ivory tint pretty close to white the universe is beige because there are a bit more areas that produce green yellow and red light than those that emit blue behold the distant future yeah humans have successfully colonized Mars and the moon problems with overpopulation and hunger on Earth are solved, but soon a new threat looms over our planet, excuse me planets, and the moon. Anyway, scientists have figured out that in 150 years, the sun will explode and destroy our entire solar system bummer. There's enough time to build a fleet of huge spaceships and evacuate everyone, but it's not enough time to come up with some sort of sci-fi space jump it's been a long time since people found a new potentially livable planet and the nearest one's a several million years right away there's no other choice humankind is evacuated into gargantuan spaceships and the infinitely long voyage begins a few decades past we leave the solar system and watch our sun explode a huge flash and that's it there's no more light just small faraway stars and the infinite black depths of space all ships are on a synced autopilot that won't go off course. No matter what, even if everyone on board were to disappear, the ship would still arrive at its destination, so the upside humans will survive for millions more years the downside, because of all of that time spent on space transports will look different, totally different ships arriving to the new planet will be populated with shapeless pulsating biomasses, sitting inside metal exoskeletons, here's how it happens bones in space get weaker. So do muscles, there's no gravity, so your body is not under any sort of pressure to keep it running properly astronauts on the international space station do a lot of exercise to stop their muscles from withering away back to the story there are gyms and special machines that recreate gravity on every space transport but to save energy they're only plugged in in a couple of hours per day unfortunate fortunately no matter how hard people exercise in space it just won't be enough after the first hundred years human bones have become so brittle that anything Remotely physical can lead to injury after another hundred years people lose the ability to stand up on their two legs, but it's not only because of weak bones after all those years in zero gravity the human bodies already changed a lot a big problem is that people lose their sense of balance, if you try to stand up you'll just fall the ship's captains dismantle the gravity machines they weren't working anyways and all the sports. Equipment on board got taken apart ages ago and used as spare parts. 
For the ships, the lack of gravity didn't just make people weaker, it also made them taller. The spine needs gravity to keep it stable, and now all those backbone discs have stretched themselves out. Humans are starting to look like blow-up toys. Everyone's given mechanical arms and legs. You just strap them on and get to work surfacing the engine, cleaning out the bedrooms, throwing trash out into space, lifting anything not happening without those. Mechanical arms and legs time passes and people become more helpless luckily the mechanical bodysuits keep getting better and better since the sun collapsed in on itself human eyes have been having a hard time inside the ships the sun is replaced by special artificial light that also gives off vitamin d since there's way less light overall people's pupils become wider then after a few more centuries their vision really starts going downhill but this problem is solved by technology artificial lenses magnify light and keep humans from going Completely blind the ships get disinfected every single day that stops bacteria and microbes from multiplying, but it also means that the human immune system doesn't have to fight off any diseases pretty soon humans can't defend themselves against anything even a mild coal could be seriously harmful is fine for now there are no germs or anything on board, but what's going to happen later on down the road on the ship millions of? Plants grow in special greenhouses with water and ultraviolet light. The plants produce oxygen and spread it through the entire ship of course, it's not enough oxygen to satisfy millions, but it helps people remember, the planet they left behind after centuries of living on spaceships humans have adapted to the new conditions, and almost stopped breathing lungs have disappeared almost completely and humans are starting to develop other ways of getting oxygen from water from liquid oxygen tanks. We're becoming a totally new species, but it's not all bad genetic. Engineering is developing every year full-fledged life support suits are created they help with movement strength speed vision hearing, even speech people's voices get so weak they can only speak in whispers luckily the suits have built-in microphones and speakers there's no food anymore, just specially created liquids after all that time and space the human stomach can't digest anything anyway fancy a handful of peanuts or a small cracker. Forget it in the beginning the special space food had loads of flavor but over time people sort of forgot what things were supposed to taste like eventually they stopped adding in flavorings and because of this new tasteless food tongue receptors stopped working soon people lost all sense of taste for some people this life seems unbearable but they have a choice they can just slide on into a cryogenic capsule for millions of years then it's just a matter of a quick defrost when the ships finally arrive but it's seriously risky to be frozen for such a long time there's no guarantee that the ships won't crash into a huge meteorite or worse people start to take a different approach they upload their consciousness to a central computer it's safer and requires much less power and when you wake up you can just download your mind into a new modified human suit some people decide to stay awake and live a quote normal life thousands of years past than millions humans look really different now all their limbs are now artificial and the Exoskeletons they wear are controlled by mind power with each passing millennium arms, neck, legs, and spines. They become smaller and smaller brittle bones soon dissolve into nothingness eyes, nose, and mouths. Disappear the brain isn't protected by a skull anymore. It's just surrounded by soft skin. Only consciousness remains nowadays a human is a powerful high-tech robot ruled over by a small pulsating bag filled with a brain it's been a few million. Years since humans left Earth all the ships. Inhabitants have already forgotten that their species was born on a planet with gravity the history of life on Earth has become a myth, an ancient legend most people believe that these ships are their true homes, always have been that's why when humans finally reach their destination, no one's that eager to get off and have a walk around life on a new unknown planet, seems like a huge pain in the spacesuit gravity air bacteria germs it takes several thousand years of evolution for humanity to get. Used to these new conditions, luckily humans have a secret weapon technology at this point all humans are downloaded from the central computer into new robot suits, people face a choice get off the ship and make this planet their new home or stay and live on the ships those that stay on the ships set off into the expanses of space to explore the galaxy and discover new worlds those who decide to stay on the new planet have to adapt to the new. Conditions it's pretty different from Earth there's a 
different air density, different weather patterns, and strange new chemical elements, it will take another million years before these robo-brain sacs take on a new shape. One day, these distant human descendants will want to research their origins, they'll invent a ship that can jump through space, and time the research will lead them to the distant past to the small planet Earth to now this might sound crazy, but just imagine that tomorrow someone lands in your backyard and they're your descendants. From the future those passengers who stayed on the ships will probably find new planets and maybe decide to stay on some of them their bodies will change and adapt to so in billions of years the universe will be inhabited by different amazing creatures that all have something in common they were all humans once many people would like to fly into space zero gravity a stunning view of earth from one side and the boundlessly frightening black area from the other yeah it's all cool but don't forget that this